In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to measure time in an AnyLogic model using functionality available in the process modeling library. In this really toy example, I'm going to create entities. I'm going to create one every five minutes. And I know it's min minutes because of the time units of the model is currently set into minutes. So it's a fixed inter arrival time of five minutes between entities. As soon as they created, I'm going to measure their start time. And for that, use the block time measure start, which is also available in the process modeling library. I'm going to call that block simply time start. After which I'm going to put the entities into a queue. I'm going to make this queue sufficiently large, let's say 10,000 units. I'm then going to delay those entities for a period of a minimum of five minutes, a mean or a mode of 10 minutes and a maximum of 15 minutes, assuming that it follows some triangular distribution. After the delay, I'm going to measure the end time using time measure end block and just call the block time end. And here I'm going to associate the time measure end block with a time measure start block. And you can have multiple of these. When I click on the plus button, it actually picks up my time start block that I've already added. And let's just also make sure that it keeps enough data points for us in its data set. And after I've measured the end time, I can dispose of the entities through a sync block. Now, because of the delay and the uncertainty, the distribution of time in the delay function, we would expect that at points there will be units building up in the queue so that the total time in the system measured between time start and time end would actually be different than the delay time. This is a really kind of basic toy example, but you can implement the same functionality on a much larger scale as well. You might have clients arriving at a door. You actually measure the time. Some stores nowadays or some government departments will issue you a number. You then go and sit into a queue, you, be, you are serviced, and you can measure the end time from the point that that customer is actually um, came into the door. And you can do this at multiple times. So you can see how long did it take the customer to get to the front of the, the line, how long did it take to actually service the client, etc. So we should be able to run our model. And we can see how many entities are being created. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. At any point, we can see how many units are in the queue and exactly which entities are in the queue, what the average length of the queue is. We can actually see which entity is currently being serviced. And we can also see which of the entities um, have already passed through in terms of the time. What if we want to visualize this data a little bit more appropriately? In the analysis tab, there is a container that can hold histogram data for you. We don't need that in terms of the time end block because I can go to help, any logic help, to the library reference guide, process modeling library, and look at the blocks and go to time measure end. And when you scroll down, you'll actually see that it also tells you what are the variables that are available. There is an entire data set that is kept internally in that time measure end block as well as histogram data. So the, the entity or the block, the logical block, already contains built into it some histogram data. And we're going to piggyback on, on that functionality. So we don't have to add the data itself. We can simply add a histogram to our model. I'm going to leave the default name chart. 
and we want to add some histogram data. I'm going to call that time in system. And the data, the histogram data, will be taken from the time end block. So I can simply start typing time end, control space. Yes, it picks up my time measure end logical block. To know what methods and variables are available to me, I press dot control space. And the third item that pops up is indeed the distribution data. And I can simply pass that distribution data to this object. Let's make the color blue. And we can also show the mean if we want to. It will be a pink li a vertical line showing what the mean time actually is. And this should be sufficient for us not going to, let's say, update the data automatically. We can save our model and run it again. What we expect will happen is that the histogram will update itself as the entities actually pass through. So let's just speed it up. And there you see the histogram starting to produce some distribution. The longer we run it, the more it will actually update. What you can actually see is that the queue keeps on increasing in size. So there clearly is a bit of a backlog. Um, and the extent of the histogram simply kind of runs away uh, for all practical purposes. If these were the customers, and customers are waiting hours and hours and hours on end, this becomes quite problematic. So we know we kind of, if we have such a scenario, we kind of know, whoops, something is wrong. At least we have a base case to compare it against. But this is how you can actually update it. So now let's assume that we can improve on the delay by actually saying, no, let's put in a second service agent. So two people at the same time can be, can be serviced. We can run the model. Again, let's just speed it up. And now we can actually see that the queue, although there are people in the queue from time to time, we start to see that the throughput time seems to be somewhat more stable. It starts to form a distribution, the mean, time in the system is still well over 10 minutes. In this case, it's about 13, 14 minutes. And if we want to, we can actually click and we can actually get the actual value 13. We know that the delay time was actually set to be in the region of uh, 10 minutes. This is unfortunately in practice, not necessarily the case. The fact that the service time takes 10 minutes does not mean that the throughput time is exactly the same. So in this demonstration, you can see that you can use something like histogram data to actually give you a fairly accurate picture of what really happens. So each entity, um, the time is actually calculated and um, it is keep track of in, in our model. <clears throat> so when you want to compare two scenarios, you can actually say, all right, here's scenario A. This is what the distribution of time in the system actually looks like. And in the second scenario, you can then compare these two distributions. Remember the fact that the mean actually improves in one scenario does not necessarily make it better. You need to look at um, the spread as well in terms of um, how well controlled your, your time in the, in the system actually is. Uh, there is a chi-square test that you can actually do to check whether two distributions are indeed significantly different from one another. The one thing about the time block that you just need to note is that the entity type that goes through the time start block and the time end block should be this physically the same entities because it keeps track of the entity ID 
so if you'd actually change the type of entity or you change its ID or you transform it into a different ID, for example, two components that is assembled into a, a class or an object that is a new agent type, you, you will probably have to implement your own version of time start. But if the entity is the same throughout, you can always use the functionality that is available for you in AnyLogic.